Hi, this is Shadi and today I'm gonna talk about why France and Europe have such exquisite Newaza and the judokas here in Europe really dedicate their time to train on the ground as well as standing. So recently I did a video talking about the differences between Newaza and Dori and BJJ rolling. So I was talking about me cross training the two and my mistakes and experience and also backing it up with what Travis Stevens says about this whole issue and how you should train judo for judo and BJJ for BJJ and uh, he also mentions in other of his videos that you know Americans need to cross train because Neiwaza isn't as developed as Europe and talks about how Europe has very good Neiwaza and it is thanks to this man Shozo Awadzu, a ninth degree red belt in judo. So Shozo Awadzu is one of the last masters to ever come and spread judo and the last masters to ever live after this whole diaspora and the spreading of the art. So he was born on April the 18th in 1923 in Kyoto, Japan. Uh, like I said, a ninth degree red belt in judo. And he started judo at the age of 10 years old and by the age of 13 he was already a black belt and national champion by the age of 15 and 16. And at the age of 26 he reaches the ranks of 6th degree uh, or 6th dan in judo so he was already a red and white belt in judo by 26 years of age. And his master Kurihara of the Butoku Kai in Kyoto he asked him and sent him to become the assistant of Mikunsuke Kaweshi in France. I talked about Kaweshi uh, and how he uh, really established judo in France and the system we have today and the colored belts. So he would arrive in Marseille on July of 1950 and just a f uh, three months later uh, in October of 1950 during a gala he would beat several national champions like Le Vanier, Martel, Perrier, Roussel, Pelletier, Laglaine, Lalaine and Zin and he would draw with only just one Jean de Hert uh, and uh, after that Kaweshi decided that he would become uh, a trainer and also under his own supervision. So in 1953 he would become the trainer of the racing club which by the way still uh, active till this day and have a dojo named after him the Shozo Awadzu Dojo and he would train Henri Courtin and Bernard Parizet two Frenchmen the first two to ever compete in the world championship in judo in 1956 so keep in mind this is even before judo became an Olympic sport in 1964 so he would become a permanent resident of France after that and he would go regularly to Japan for visits and uh, throughout the years he would uh, train multiple world champions French to be exact and he would train uh, in racing club up until his death in 1914 just two years before his death he retired from teaching at the age of 91 this is formidable and also you see how becoming a trainer and seeing people develop in front of you would would leave you to give more and also just gives you a sense of fulfillment and a drive kind of like the late Abdul Manap Nurman Gomedov who passed away recently and what he did with the Dagestani people and how he trained them and giving the world some of the best fighters he dedicated his life to training Shodzo Awadzu similar it is thanks to him that we have such good groundwork in Europe and the old traditional Neiwaza of the Kodokan. So, um, like I said, he was an expert in Neiwaza, uh, worldwide very well known in Kata also and Tendoku Ranchu. Tendoku Ranchu, if you don't know, it's like drilling a technique but in the air without a partner, doing the footsteps of the throw, the hand uh, motions and gestures of the throw, but all on your own to develop like a muscle memory type uh, training and also he was skilled in Neiwaza and Kata so I I am very much the same I really like Neiwaza Kata 
because of my Aikido background. So he publishes a book called Méthode de Sol, Méthode de Judo au Sol, or Ground Method of Judo, which was published in Paris in 1963. He also talks a lot about the moral code of Judo. He would often talk to his students about peace, respect, honor, and being humble. So it wasn't to him. It wasn't just uh, you know what's your weight. Um, can you compete uh, on this day? Do we have this tournament? Can you participate like many other uh, instructors? But rather, he wanted to uh, really show the real message of judo, which was you know being a good competitor, of course, but also having the moral code of judo and also not neglect neglecting the groundwork of judo, which a lot of people in many other countries do, unfortunately, and you know, doing all these uh, seminars and open mats and seeing how good in France the groundwork in Judo is, uh, it is thanks to this man. I only found out about him a few months ago and I'm very ashamed to say this. But, you know, like I said, big clubs like ACBB, Champigny, uh, etc. A racing club, of course, uh, have such good groundwork. It is thanks to this man. And even in Newaza competitions, the uh, Judo Federation in France hosts the uh, uh, Newaza Championship for like black belts, I think, um, and they allow BJJ to participate in. However, on the podium, it is always mixed between Judo and BJJ, uh, like I did when I participated in a Newaza tournament. A lot of black belts in other categories. Uh, beat BJJ practitioners and it is because we have such good Newaza curriculum in France and again it is thanks to this man that you know if you live in France and you have and you uh, belong to a big club like the clubs that I mentioned you're not in some little dojo or in some suburb you train only twice a week you can have really good groundwork and you probably don't need to cross train but I cross train the two not because I believe uh, you know BJJ have some secret potion or secret recipe for the ground but simply because my preference I like the ground a lot and also just supplement my uh, time on the ground with more uh, so that's why I go to a BJJ gym and I train there and it is a uh, Hicks and Gracie affiliate gym so we do a lot of the classical stuff, open guard, closed guard, uh, very little emphasis on leg locks, maybe in the nogi classes, but I don't really attend them. I basically do just gi, and we do a lot of the uh, stuff that I showed in Kosen Judo being done, or Nanatei Judo, like the spider, the Della Riva, uh, just basically open guard, lasso, etc. Like I said, this is just my preference. I like the ground. I like to experiment with the variations of the open guard. Um, also, just enhance my top game, etc. I mean, it, your top game should be very well done if you're a good judoka. But when it comes to being on your back, experimenting, you know, you should supplement with some uh, BJJ, in my opinion, even if you're in Europe. Uh, but the judokas in the competitions that went there, uh, they all just played top game and just mauled everyone, including BJJ players. And like I said, thanks to this legend and master that's uh, kept teaching until 91 years of age, the groundwork uh, of judo. And he was also awarded the Legion of Honor, uh, Knighthood and Order of the Rising Sun by the Japanese Emperor. So this, is, this man is clearly... Uh, beloved and very well accredited worldwide, not just uh, here in France because he taught us some Neiwaza. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, small presentation and to know why in Europe Neiwaza is so important and such a big part of the curriculum. It was thanks to this man, Shozo Awadzu. If you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening. Thank you.